Oh, you guys must be here because you hate snails, right? Well, I've got a horror story for you. In my 40 gallon aquarium, there are hundreds of snails. And in this video, we're gonna take them all out and see how many were born over a year. Now, of course, when I say how many snails were born in the aquarium over a year, I'm really just talking about how many are still alive after a year. Now, to give perspective, I started with four, and I'm expecting to find at least 100, probably 200. Now, over the year that I've been keeping ramshorn snails, the biggest one got to be about the size of my thumb, or the end of my thumb. This is the original shell right here. But they don't just die from age. There's also disease, and there's also predators in there that are preying on them. As we've seen in other videos, there are fish that will eat snails. Uh, the puffer fish love snails. Uh, cichlids love snails. Betas love eating snails when they get the chance. But nothing has been able to eat snails in this 40 gallon enough to keep the population down. There's always more births than deaths. So today what we're doing is manually controlling the population by taking as many snails out of this tank as we can and putting them in a bucket. Now, in the bucket, we do have um, a sponge filter, old sponge filter from when I first set up the 40 gallon. And this is just to filter some of the waste out for the snails and to give them uh, water movement and oxygen. I don't want to kill the snails. I, at the very least, I'd like to make some money off of them. So I'll probably sell like the whole 200 for like 20 bucks or something. It's really not that hard to find ram's horn snails, but it can be hard to find them at a good price, especially if you have a, a Mabu puffer fish or something. All right, so why am I taking out all these snails? Well, first reason is not what you think. Uh, most people don't like the look of snails. I actually love the look of ram's horn snails in moderation because the ram's horn snail shell matches the river stones and the driftwood that I put in here. That's why I originally bought the snails. But eventually they get to the point with their prolific breeding that they cover all the food that I put in. For floating food, it's not much of a problem. But for sinking foods, for cucumbers, for um, bottom feeder wafers, they just cover it before the slower moving or nocturnal fish can ever get to it. Another problem with snail deaths, other than the shell being left behind and discoloring, is when a snail dies, it, the pressure changes in the shell and it just kind of blows open. So that means that some of the meat is coming out, the foot usually, and that gets eaten by the fish. But the other half of the snail is still in the shell where the fish can't get to it. Back when I had puffer fish, this was a big problem because the puffer fish would eat the first half of the ram's horn snail and then the rest would stay inside and rot. Later on, I switched to pond snails, which have a much shorter, more open shell, allowing the puffer fish to get in and eat more of it than they would with the ram's horn snails. However, if you have a bigger puffer fish, like a Mabu puffer or Frahaka puffer, or even a Congo puffer, I would definitely recommend using ram's horn snails because although it's harder to get to the body from the outside, those puffer fish don't really care. They just crack the shell open and have at it. Well, now that we've got the info out of the way, I think it's time we counted some snails. Hey guys, welcome to a future mad update. I'm glad you're not here in the room because I smell terrible because I just came out from working out. Check me out on Instagram. <laughs> Slaps roof of chicken arm. <laughs> um, seriously though guys, welcome back and I'm glad you're still here. Now, now that you are here, you have a choice. Um, the carbon or the hand grenade, which will it be? I'm glad that I'm being so random because it means that I'm in a decent mood for these videos, which is what I try to do for you guys every single time. So what are we talking about? We're talking about snails. How many snails did we get? 130 snails, which is a lot. It's not as many as I was hoping. It was more than Zach thought, so ha! Zach, if you're watching this video, it was not a 64 stack of snail. You were wrong. So I talked at the beginning about why snails were bad. They're also good, you know, there's a lot of people who say they're good. And they are great. Uh, they eat they eat dead plant matter, they eat uh, leftover food scraps, they eat 
dead fish, which can be great. Uh, algae, big one, big one's algae. Uh, but the problem is that's all they do. They're these zombie machines slowly moving towards any and all food sources, even if it's like a fish that's moving too slow. Probably won't have that problem ever. I've never seen that problem, but they will eat whatever will let them eat it, basically. So I got them out because the algae wafer uh, would always get surrounded by them. You know, you put those in for your pleco. So say you have a pleco, you have a pleco in there, you feed him an algae wafer. Awesome. Like he gets to it right away and he has a few bites and then all of a sudden in like half an hour, it's surrounded by snails. In my case, ram's horn snails. And that's a big problem. It's not an unavoidable problem because all you have to do is put in more algae wafers than the snails can handle, right? If you have three snails and you have four algae wafers, they're not gonna be able to get to all the algae wafers at once. But the more food you put in, the more snails are produced. So by overcoming the problem, you're making the problem a bigger problem. So I just wanted to say that snails are a good thing, snails are a bad thing. You just gotta figure out how to balance them. If you have a puffer fish and you don't really care about how good the tank looks, cause there's gonna be shells everywhere, after just a few days, um, easy solution. Put as many snails as you want in your 40 gallon. You can always bring them back to your puffer fish. Um, you know, we talked about the other problems already, but you know, the main problem is they, they take over the food. They take over the resources for your uh, nocturnal or your slower moving fish. So that's kind of my take on it. I do want to talk about some updates though. Um, in the 10 gallon, there's absolutely nothing. There's nothing in the 10 gallon, there's no updates there. Other than like probably 100 snails as well in there, like at least 100 snails, those trumpet snails are out of control. Um, but in the 40 gallon, last week we had a problem with the rainbow fish. Uh, it got its eye ripped out. If you haven't seen that, go back to the next video. I'll try to link it if I can. I'm not that smart, but I'll try and figure it out. Um, or I guess it'd be right there. <laughs> Um, but the rainbow fish got its eye ripped out and uh, I want to give you guys an update because it's doing really really well It's actually brought out the other rainbow fish, which is pretty cool Like all the other rainbow fish were hiding I put that monocular rainbow fish in there whose name is now Clarence because Any fish in my aquarium that has an eye ripped out deserves a name. So she's Clarence. She's brought everyone out She's the life of the party and she's doing really well. One weird thing that happened recently that I didn't catch fully on camera was she dropped her entire egg sac. It looked like, like it looked like her ovary just came out. <laughs> uh, because I thought, I thought that when um, rainbow fish lay eggs, I guess it doesn't, haven't done enough research on it. Um, but when they lay eggs, they just kind of shoot out the eggs and the male swims by and fertilizes them. And it's just so random. Like they don't protect the eggs at all. In fact, I'm pretty sure they ate them as soon as they came out of her. But it was weird for her because they came out all in like one uh, clear sack, kind of like snail eggs when they're laid onto uh, plants and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know what that was about. Doesn't seem to be any problem with her. I thought it was like a piece of her eye that was falling out. So that was a little terrifying, um, but fell out. Seems to be okay. Nothing, nothing going on with it. And I did actually have a baby rainbow fish. So there is a baby rainbow fish in the 40 gallon. Hopefully it's still there. They can be a little hard to feed. But this is the great thing when you feed a variety of foods and when you feed very fine foods because um, chances are you're gonna have some fry and those fry can eat that food and grow up and join the rest of the school. So anyways guys, I hope you liked this video. I'm sorry I didn't get any new fish. I said in the last video I'm gonna get some new fish. I am trying to be more patient with it because a lot of the problems that you've seen in the past, if you go into past videos, are because I am not patient <laughs> with getting fish, you know? I wanna get a thousand guppies and I wanna show you guys what they look like and then uh, move on to the next thing and the next thing, but that always causes problems. So I'm trying to slow down a little bit. I'm doing informational videos like these. We are gonna have updates. We are gonna have vlogs. I hope you guys aren't too disturbed by my vlog style, <laughs> but uh, lots of stuff. So if you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe and you'll see more of this and other great stuff. Uh, if you like the video, please like it. I would appreciate it. And I will see you guys next Sunday.